Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey. Yeah, that's better. All right. So uh, we are here today, I hope, I'm in the right room, to talk about Spark and the authoring experience improvements that have happened in Drupal 8 and how that affects Drupal 7. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Angie, or Webchick. I go by on Drupal.org. <laughs> I uh, uh, am not worthy of whistles, but I do uh, like Drupal a lot, and I'm a huge nerd, and I have no life, so that blends really well together uh, in my personal life. So I, uh, I work with Dries in the office of the CTO at Acquia. Um, I am a core committer for the Drupal project, so I commit patches and help uh, you know get Drupal 8 done faster and more better. -er. I'm a, a Drupal Association board member, and then I came into the community five, uh, I'm sorry, in 2005, nine years ago, so I'm old, um, uh, through the Google Summer of Code program, um, and kind of got my feet wet in open source that way and became totally uh, immersed in it because I realized that anybody can contribute to something cool like this, and people really want to help you. So, uh, you know, if you haven't contributed before, definitely come to the sprints tomorrow. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, so what we're going to talk about here is I'm going to give a little bit of background information on Spark. I'm assuming if you're in the room, you probably have some idea what Spark is, but just in case you like hanging out in rooms called Ballroom G just to see what happens, I'll let you know what that's about. Um, then we'll do a little bit of a demo between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 to compare and contrast the authoring experience. Then we'll talk on if you're stuck on Drupal 7, which pretty much everybody is, how you survive on Drupal 7 uh, until Drupal 8 when it's out, when all this stuff will be baked in. And then we'll also talk about what's next. And for this part, especially since we're not, not a tiny room, but a fairly small room, I'd like to actually do some audience participation here because we're currently sort of in throws between trying to get Drupal 8 out and the next sort of wave of innovative stuff we want to do. So I'd actually like to hear from people in the audience about things they feel are Drupal's biggest pain points that we should be looking at or other solutions that are out there that we should keep an eye on. So we'll talk a little bit about that kind of stuff too. Um, so Spark is this project that uh, was kicked off in uh, 2012 by Dries Beitart. And uh, what he wanted to do was see a uh, focused attention given to Drupal's authoring experience. Because we work a lot on the developer experience. We work a lot on site builder tools and things like this. But really, we don't do a lot for the people who are sort of, I call them victims of Drupal. You know, like those people who are stuck using Drupal every day when, when someone like myself goes and creates a website for them. And it's really important that their experience is awesome because you know, they're the ones who, in a lot of cases, we're really seeing this trend um, where it used to be IT called the shots, and they're like, I like Drupal, so we're using Drupal. But more and more and more, companies are bringing in the people who actually have to use the system every day to help form the decisions around that. And so if the thing isn't easier to use, it actually becomes a Drupal adoption issue. And so we were trying to address that. Um, so the goal was to build really kick-ass features for the current version of Drupal, meaning Drupal 7 in Contrib, and then we wanted people to be able to use those things now so that we could also, at the same time, be building that stuff into Drupal 8 so it would form the next version of the platform. Is that a question back there, or are you just stretching? I agree. It's good for a good stretch. OK, great. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about our approach and how we went about that. So um, we started by looking at a bunch of our different competitors. And we were really clear we wanted to look at not only just like the, the usual suspects like WordPress and Joomla that are open source or competitors, but also the proprietary competitors like CQ5, uh, SDL Tridian, some of these ones that a lot of people at DrupalCon may not have even heard of. But these are ones that are multi-million, gazillion dollar things that actually have less capabilities than Drupal, but nevertheless people uh, use because they don't know any better, especially large businesses. Um, so we looked at all of those and we kind of graphed them out. And what we found is that, hands down, Drupal is the most flexibly technical solution that there is. And I think that's, that probably resonates with a lot of people in the room. Like the reason we use Drupal is because it can do anything. If we want to build a blog for our little club site, we can do it in Drupal. If we want to build a you know, headless, restful API waka waka thing for MSNBC that you know, goes out to 60 different mobile apps and a web front end that isn't made in anything but Node.js, you know, we can do that in Drupal and it's great because you know it really allows you know someone can start with a not very sophisticated knowledge of web development and go all the way down to the biggest projects on the internet with this one tool that they have to learn however what we found is on the authoring experience side everybody was kicking our butt and we see this happen a lot even just in the open source world where people will oftentimes 
look at Drupal and WordPress side by side and go, oh my god, this thing is terrible. I'm totally going to use WordPress because it's way easier and I can just do stuff with it. And they're happy with WordPress until they hit a wall where they try to do like that one level up of project from what they have been doing and suddenly they just find something that WordPress can't do or can't do easily. And then they begrudgingly come back to Drupal. And then once they do, they're like, oh, this thing is totally awesome. And it's like, how do we stop that one or three or five or whatever year gap it is between people first looking at Drupal and sort of dismissing it as something only for geeks or for simple things and you know really showing them the power you know that it has so what we did is we sort of looked at all of the different facets of authoring experience and sort of map that across different things. And we looked at all of Contrib and we looked at you know, both what Drupal Core had in the box and we chose to focus on a few different key areas that really weren't getting a lot of focused attention. So um, you know, we, well, I'll talk more about what those are later, but um, you know, for things like uh, in-place editing, mobile authoring, um, where we saw you know, people like say Palantir was really owning the workflow space. We saw um, you know, like a, a lot of like Dixon was doing a great work on content staging stuff. We saw that there were areas that we didn't even have boxes to tick even with contrib modules and we sort of chose to focus there. Um, so our approach was we uh, started with design and we, uh, we tried to, you know, first uh, Kevin O'Leary, our designer, he would sort of mock up these things in fireworks or in, in vision or something like that and sort of run them past the internal team and we are all engineers, we tell them all the reasons why none of that stuff would work and this was, you know, like not going to work with contrib and all these kinds of things and we'd sort of do a, you know, and then a round of initial feedback and then what he would do is create uh, clickable prototypes in either InVision or sometimes in HTML or in JavaScript and CSS. So instead of like looking at an idea of how something would work, you'd actually like interact with it and then find ways that people were confused and stuff. And we do hallway testing. So you know at, at Acquia we have a lot of both very highly technical and also really non-technical users. So it's a great place to just be able to grab random people and see what they think. Um, and then we would refine those designs and share the results with the community so the community could also see what we came up with and then come up with their own thing. It's a cool dance, yeah. All right. And then we would iterate, 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 iterate a lot to try and refine those designs further. So, for example, the, the, the mobile navigation bar that we worked on, that actually started from the community from a gentleman named Louis Nyman who kind of came up with this idea of like, you know, putting some H, just static HTML stuff together, see how a mobile friendly toolbar could even work. And then we sort of built on that and we were like, what if there were icons and stuff like that? And we built on it again to say, okay, we have to somehow handle the nesting stuff and people need to find things. And so there's a lot of rapid iteration type of thing that we did before we got to the point of trying to code it for, for, for contrib and for core. And then we would argue a lot, basically. That was our last approach as we go into the issue queue and say, we really think this is important. Here's all the work that we've done. Here's the people that we've worked with. And then, uh, you know, talk a lot to the developers about implementation challenges with those things. And then over time actually got uh, a lot of these features into core. So what did we actually tackle so far? One is WYSIWYG. So when you download Drupal 8, it actually has a WYSIWYG editor pre-configured out of the box, it's CK editor, but it was all done in such a way that you could swap out CK editor for tiny MCE or any other, uh, you know, sort of WYSIWYG editor thing, or just turn it off if you don't want a WYSIWYG editor at all, that's totally fine. Because some of us like, you know, to remember how to write HTML like it's 1999, so that's totally valid. In place editing is the ability to actually click on something that's on the page and edit it right in place without having to navigate back to the back end form. Um, this is mostly uh, actually improvement for more small sites than enterprise sites, honestly, because enterprise sites often have like this huge workflow of all kinds of approvals or whatever, but it does make it really simple and it solves the preview problem where you can totally see what's actually happening on the page and, and see the effects of editing it immediately. And then we worked on uh, a streamlined content authoring experience. This again was an initiative that rose from the community. The uh, uh, Boyan Summers, uh, Roy Schulten, and, uh, and Ryan Frederick uh, from the Drupal UX team uh, sort of envisioned this Photoshop mock-up of how we could redesign the content creation page to be much more streamlined and, and usable by people. And we actually uh, injected funding into that effort. Wondercrowd donated some uh, engineering time as well um, to try and get that thing done. And you'll see that in Drupal 8 also. And then in terms of mobile friendliness, um, a lot of work, a lot of prototyping around what does this look like on an iPhone? What does it look like on an iPad? What does it look like in a, you know, like crazy, you know, refrigerator thing that we have on our coffee maker, whatever, like that kind of thing. Really trying to, you know, not focus on just the desktop experience, but the whole way along and doing mobile first and these kinds of things. So, so I'm talking a lot. Uh, it's probably time to actually see this stuff in action and see if I'm full of crap or not. So here we go, a live demo. What could possibly go wrong? All right. 
Any questions, I guess, before I dive into that about Spark, our methodology, what things we looked at, what things we prioritized? Yeah. Yep, so the question was, so since Spark was very focused on Drupal 8, is there any work to backport some of that stuff to Drupal 7? And yes, there is, but don't spoil the rest of my presentation. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so the question was, is it able to edit entities or only inline text? It's able to edit any field on an entity. So, uh, and we'll see this in a second here when I show you unknowns, but you can, if I add a custom block, it can also edit the title and description of the block. If I add a, uh, I haven't tried on user profiles, but in theory, it should also work on user profiles if you turn it on for that. So any, it's, it's designed in such a way that it is, is entity agnostic. It works on a field level. Uh, so it will in place editing whatever field that you throw at it. So there's no reason it wouldn't work on commerce products or anything else. Yeah, great question, actually. All right, I don't see any other hands, so we'll, we'll jump into this. And um, pret pretend this whole, t whole part is done in black and white, and like I'm crying a lot because like it's so hard. Anyway, I'll just show you. So this is Drupal 7. Most people have probably seen Drupal 7 and, and what it looks like. Um, so you know, if I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be a content author, I'm gonna create a blog post about Vancouver, which is where I'm from, and it's a town I'd love you all to visit sometime. So I'm gonna add a content. And I'm gonna add an article. And then I enter a title, this is like, welcome to Vancouver. And I might give it some tags, you know, like mountains and oceans or whatever. Um, and then in my body field, I wanna say, welcome to the wonderful city of Vancouver. And maybe I wanna put some emphasis there. What do I have to do to put emphasis there? Yeah, I have to know how to type strong tags, right? <sighs> That's fun. I can't tell you how many content authors in big, you know, or even like nonprofits and stuff like that, they totally know how to write HTML. So this is great for them, you know, like, anyway. So it was like, um, here's a picture of our wonderful city, um, you know, and I'll put a colon and I'll fill this out in a second and then please come and visit us. You know, and I'll put a smiley face because we're so friendly. All right, so here I want to put an image in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down, and luckily in Drupal 7, there is an image field. In Drupal 6, this didn't even exist, so this is, you know, rocking stuff. So I browse, and I go, and I look in my desktop for my image, and I go, okay, there we go. Upload that. Perfect. That was wonderful. Uh, but now what the problem is is I want the, I want the image here, not like over wherever it's going to do. So what I have to do is I have to right-click this. I have to copy the link address, and then I need to go up here, and I need to know how to write an image tag, which is a little bit trickier. You know, maybe I want some alt text in here. Uh, what am I doing? Fingers. Work with me here, man. All right, Vancouver. There we go. All right, so I'm, don't forget a title tag. Good point. Yep, so title, Vancouver. And then, you know, you're, I'm all XHTML ready, so I know to put a little closing slash here because I'm down with that. All right, so that is what, in a straight, out-of-the-box Drupal 7 installation, a content author would have to do in order to put an image in a post. Everyone agree with that? Ha, you're wrong. You know why? Because well, watch this. I'm going to save. Oh, one other thing I want to highlight is, like, this form scrolls forever, and it's got all this stuff, and all of it looks really important. So you're like... What's this? What's provision? If what's this? Blah, blah. And you're like clicking on all of them and wondering if you should do this or not. Next thing, okay, finally you're like, okay, I've dismissed. I don't need to do anything. I'm going to save this. What's going to happen? What's that? Oh, if only we had two images. No, what's going to happen is I'm not even going to get the image. You know why? Yeah, because I, I use filtered HTML, and I actually have to use full HTML if I want to use uh, an image in a post, because that's advanced, right? So I have to do this. <laughs> and now I get two images, and one of them is fine, but the other one is in extremely enormous size, and it breaks my entire layout. Yay! All right. So Drupal 7 is awesome. No, so like, and you know, people in here are like kind of rolling their eyes like, yeah, 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 web chick. Nobody uses stock Drupal 7. They use like all kinds of cool modules, like WYSIWYG module can work around this problem. There's like cool modules that Nate Haug has written, you know, like uh, inline image and stuff like that, that totally work around this problem. I'm like, yes, 
And you only know that if you are a Drupal person who's been in the community long enough to know what things to Google for to find that information out. For normal people who just download Drupal versus WordPress and they try to do this thing in both systems, this is exactly the experience they end up having. And this looks really bad for Drupal. So let's talk about how this has changed in Drupal 8. So in Drupal 8, um, I go to my, it's the same thing. I go to my home page, I click add content. This is funny, it's actually doing a thing because the screen is so narrow, but we'll talk about it later. So I'm going to add, a, add an article. <clears throat> oh, did you notice something? Overlay is gone. <laughs> right. If I want to go back to my site, I just click a whoop, back to my site button, and hey, I'm back at my site. All right. Wow. That's a reason to use Drupal 8 right now. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So I go to article, and I type, you know, welcome to Vancouver. I don't remember what I said. Uh, something, something, awesome, something, and oh, look at this. I want to make this uh, bold. What do I do? I click the bold button. Wow. It's just like fantastic. Okay. Um, and then I'm saying, uh, cool picture, welcome, etc. Okay. I don't remember what I said in the other thing. Uh, if I want to upload an image, I just do it right here. Image. Go find it. It's, whoops, it's that one. Great. Um, I enter my alt text right here. I don't know if it does title as well as alt. I should look into that a little bit, but we're going to call this Vancouver. Why are alt text important, by the way? Anybody know? For accessibility, exactly. So if, if you can't see the image, and it's not just because you literally can't see it because you're blind, but it could also be because your cell phone is freaking slow and it hasn't downloaded all this stuff, um, then it will automatically uh, put the text in there for you so you have some idea of what's, what's happening. Sorry? And SEO, very good point. Yes, SEO, because Google uh, doesn't know how to see your images either, although apparently it does now parse JavaScript, which is really interesting. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and save that. And it's big, but it'll fix itself. Don't worry. That's cool. Oceans, mountains, something. I don't remember what I said. And then I'm going to save and publish it. <coughs> Boom. There's my image. There's my stuff. Um, and something that's kind of cool is this image is pretty big, right? Nah, I won't do that yet. We'll get there later. Don't worry about the image size for now. But the point being, I don't have to scroll side to side. It didn't make it that big. It actually shrunk it down to the appropriate width. So that was one step, right? It was filling out the form and it was doing the things. Um, the other thing that I call to attention there is that um, all the stuff I had to fill out, like all the things that I as a content author needed to worry about, those were on the left side and I went ahead and I did all that stuff. And I didn't need to worry about this other stuff. This other stuff was on the side, so I can look at it if I need to, and maybe I want to add a special path other than node one to this, this page, but it's not right in my face, like begging me to click on it. So this is that whole content page redesign thing that we've done in Drupal 8. So, so that was pretty cool, right? Yeah? All right, so what if we want to edit this thing now? So I spotted a typo where um, I meant to put two exclamation points instead of one, because that is not nearly enough exclamation points, right? So what I have to do is I have to click this edit button, and then I'm taken back to this thing that looks absolutely nothing like what the front end of my site looked like, right? This has no relation whatsoever to what I was just looking at, but I'm like, you know, betting on, okay, it's probably okay, let's go ahead and, you know, add my second exclamation point here. Um, but I'm kind of nervous about it, so that, you know what, is actually what I want to do is probably put a width on this image so it's not so wide, so I maybe do width equals 600 or something like that. So now I'm like, okay, well, now that I've done that, that width thing, I want to see what that looks like, right? So you click preview. Um, and then what happens? You see your, the node of the content you just created twice, in case you missed it the first time, there it is again in your admin theme, which looks nothing like the front end of your site. So basically, you really literally have no idea what your thing is going to look like until you save it and it's live and people can see it. It's a little bit of an exaggeration because you can unpublish it by default, but you definitely don't get anything like a real preview experience. And it turns out 600 wasn't short enough. I actually need to make it more like 400. So I'm going to repeat this process three or four times until things look the way I want. It's very frustrating. So in Drupal 8, if I want to do the same flow where I want to, I'm not going to touch the image width because that's a different thing, but let's say I want to, uh, you know, put a, I actually want to fix my typo here because Samihini is not a word that I'm aware of, maybe in a different language. So I can click into quick edit and I can just say, oh, yes, of course you're going to do that anyway. So I can say Vancouver and I can say, you know, here I'm going to do something, something. Dang it. Okay, there we go. It's still in alpha. We're working on it. You're getting it all the same. 
there we go, and here's my cool picture. And, and I can even, and to your, your question was, does it only work with text? Because so far I've shown inline editing a title, inline editing a body, it's like, yeah, 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 that's text. What about something like taxonomy, which is actually not text, it's actually a reference to something else. If I click on this, what happens is it automatically swaps out the back end form on the front end so I can actually edit it right there. So this is what you'll see for things like dates, username fields, taxonomy fields, and stuff like that. Basically, if you can't reconcile it to uh, like a HTML rich text element, um, it will actually just pull in whatever you'd see on the back end. But the difference is you get it right in the front end and can see the effect it has immediately on your site. So when I'm done, I click save. And then that's edited. It's done. I didn't have to go to any back-end form. If I made a mistake, I could just quick edit again and go back in there again. It's very, very simple and easy to use. Um, so, you know, that's cool. Yay! Oh, right, yeah. One other thing I wanted to call out, um, just to give Drupal 7, I'm giving Drupal 7 a really hard time. I want to, like, I don't, I'm, it's just for the purpose of this session, but it's like Drupal 7 is actually awesome, and there's many, many distributions and things like that that will offset all of the things that I'm showing you here, but what I'm trying to emphasize, though, is from a Drupal adoption standpoint, this is a problem, um, because if you're not an insider, you don't know a lot of these things. So the other problem with Drupal um, 8, uh, 7, and you're already kind of seeing this here, see how this toolbar is starting to get kind of janky? You know, like it's popping up a hello admin on top of the other thing. And it's actually going to get even worse as I shrink down. Like, you know, like if I'm looking at this on a uh, very skinny cell phone or something like that, this is what it's going to And I actually happen to have a very skinny cell phone on the other desktop. And so this is what it looks like in an iPhone. And you, like, half the screen is taken up by this toolbar that, you, you know, so you're not even seeing your website. You're just seeing this toolbar and how to click around it and stuff like that. That is not a workable solution for anyone using mobile stuff. So in Drupal 8, we've done this thing called responsive design. And how responsive design works is, um, and unfortunately, the screen width is not wide enough to make it go fully horizontal. But picture it, if you will, that on a really wide screen, you'd see tabs across the top for home, about us, things like that. And then as the screen gets narrower, those tabs would start to go on top of each other and sort of reflow the page. And so that's what you're seeing here, where like the, the tools block ends up beneath the content, rather than all squishing back and forth. Um, and then the other thing that you'll notice is as this gets even smaller, um, you'll start to see like the, uh, the description on the uh, navigation blocks went away, right? Like, goes like this. Um, and then as I click my manage toolbar, it will actually flip uh, orientation between vertical and horizontal. Really wish I had a different resolution to work at here, but trust me on this. It'll go back and forth where it goes foop, foop, and it'll go back and forth when it's, the screen is wide enough, it will accommodate for a, uh, for a horizontal view, which is really handy. And then if you look at Drupal 8 in a cell phone, this will be interesting. Hmm, how am I going to do this? Nope. Oh. Can I? Hmm. Yeah, maybe I can change the scale. I've never, I've never demoed this on, like, I don't even know what this is. Like, 420 by 120 resolution is, like, really, really small. Um, the good thing is that Drupal 8 looks good in it, though. Um, so that's good. Oh. Huh. Anyway, oh, good, that's what I was looking for. Go back, and then go here, and then go there. Um, yeah, great. So in Drupal 8, it's gonna look fine. Um, here's my login thing. Guess what my password is? It's very secure. Um, and then when I'm in here, the, the, the bar just comes out. I can pop in here, go to you know structure, into configuration, any of those kinds of things. Um, really easily just from my cell phone. And even what you'll find is that, uh, I don't know how well it works right now, because again, we're still in alpha, but even features like quick edit work. So I can do a quick edit here, um, and I can start actually like typing stuff in the thing, and it actually works on a cell phone as well. So everything that we've done to make in-place editing work, everything else, it works completely fine on a narrow device. WYSIWYG yeah, WYSIWYG totally works. Uh, let's go down to the WYSIWYG. Um, yep. So here's your bold button, your italicized button, so I can do, you know, oh. It gets a little funny because, like, the iOS and sometimes Android have different actions for stuff. But, yeah, the buttons completely work. You get a little funny things when you try to do, um, you know, fancy stuff like select all and doing this really fast with your fingers. Sometimes you run into uh, iOS thinking, did you mean to call up Siri or whatever? But, you know, like that kind of thing. Because I always mean to call up Siri when I do stuff. But anyway, yeah. So, so yeah, we, I, anyway, the, the bottom line being that we put a bunch of time into making sure that this worked well. 
um, not just on you know a desktop computer, but on everything else. And the other thing I want to show you is in Drupal 7, it's really funny because like that's what Drupal 7 looks like by default. If you want to see the content, you have to do this like swimming exercise. You're like, what is that? You know, kind of stuff. So anyway, it's just it's really quite a mess. Um, so yeah. So now that I've scared you all away from using Drupal 7, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about Drupal 7. Yeah, yeah, right. Drupal 8, I don't know. Um, it'll be released, it's, the, the answer for when is Drupal 8 released is when it's ready. And so when it's ready means when there are no critical bugs. And right now we have 97 of them. Um, but we have had 320 or something in Drupal 7 at one point. So we're, we're not as far away, but it, it really depends on the velocity. And we're, we're in a kind of a state right now where we've been relying on the same like group of, say, 30 people to drive the release home for two and a half years. And they need some help because they're starting to get burnt out and things like that. So the more people who ingest energy and you know, funding and beers or whatever it's needed to kind of give these guys a boost, I think the, the better off we're all going to be. Um, but you know, it could be anywhere from we could still make the end of the year, possibly, if we get a huge injection. Like I think Dries mentioned his keynote, like if we get three times better at closing criticals than we currently are, we could make it by the end of the year. But we're probably looking at 2015 at this point. So it'll be a while. So that's why you're like, yeah, that's all cute and stuff, but what about the sites I'm building today, which for the foreseeable future are going to be on Drupal 7? Well, I have good news for you because there is actually Drupal 7 backports of every single thing that I showed you here pretty much. Um, so I'll put these slides up because I know the type is probably kind of small, but I'll just read them out loud. So the WYSIWYG feature is CK Editor Module. So just use CK Editor Module, you have the WYSIWYG feature. Um, for for in-place editing, we backported the stuff in Drupal 8 to a module called Quick Edit. It used to be called Edit, but we changed it to Quick Edit because people like renaming things. I don't know. Um, the responsive toolbar is backported in a project called Mobile Friendly Navigation Toolbar, but all I would remember is Navbar because that's the name of the project URL. Um, for a responsive front-end theme, there is a responsive Bartic project, but most people don't build their websites with Bartic on the front-end. So what I would do if I were in your situation is download something like Omega or Zen or Adaptive. Or there's tons of them, and they all handle that responsive uh, grid-based, like, yucky yucka stuff for you. So you just basically throw CSS on top of it. Like, my website is responsive-ish. And I don't know anything about responsive markup. The only thing I did was download Omega and make the background red and put my picture in the corner. So, you know, like, it's pretty cool. Um, if you want a responsive admin theme, our team has worked on something called Ember, which you'll see in all, like, the Acquia demos and, and our product demos and things like that. Um, responsive images is a module called Picture. That's not at all unclear. Uh, <laughs> uh, responsive tables is a module called Responsive Tables. That's a lot more clear. Um, what responsive tables is, I guess I didn't show that. Hold on a second, because it's actually really cool. Um, how responsive tables works is, is, is in Drupal 8, um, all of these things are, are views, like the, the people page, the content page, and stuff like that. What it'll start doing as the screen gets smaller is it'll actually start dropping columns out. Ah, I'm already at the salons thing. But when it starts, you'll see things like when was it last posted, who's the author, these kinds of things. And you can actually rate columns on a scale of like low priority, medium priority, or high priority. And then as the screen shrinks down, any low priority columns will start dropping out. And then the medium priority ones, so you can actually make the admin tables responsive so they work on a small device as well. Um, so that's really neat. And you can do that in Drupal 7 too. Um, and then that simplified overlay I talked about, just that little back to admin, or I'm sorry, back to site link. Uh, Dave Reed wrote a module called Escape Admin that does that. So, so really everything that I showed you here, it's awesome that Drupal 8 ships with it and it's all integrated out of the box and it's definitely going to help uh, Drupal's adoption, especially when it's compared and contrasted with some of our competitors. But for, for, for people in this room who are like kind of Drupal insiders, they know how to search for modules, they know how to grab things and put in their project, um, they can totally use this. And then I, we have, a mo we have a distribution called Spark, like based on the name of the project, that actually pulls all this stuff together. But it's really not well maintained. So if somebody wants to like join the team just to keep the thing updated with like core security updates and stuff like that, I'd love to talk to you because we, we've been very focused on Drupal 8 um, and not really on Drupal 7. But, but if you want something that kind of shows you how to tile the, these things together into one single distribution you can build off of, Spark is a good project to check out. So what's next? So what's next uh, for Spark, what I'm calling Spark 2.0, is um, first, before we even start Spark 2.0, we need to get Drupal 8 a lot closer to done. Um, and so what we've done is, is the, the implementation team for Spark, who's, which consisted of uh, Jesse Beach, Wim Lears, and Gabor Hoishi, 
uh, who've been doing the engineering work on all these front-end improvements, uh, they, since Prague, have been focused almost entirely on uh, resolving beta blockers, resolving critical issues for Drupal 8 to try and help get the release out the door, and doing a lot of work like unblocking other contributors, trying to bring you know new folks on board, you know trying to lead, you know cat herd things like let's write change notices for all the stuff so we can get the beta out, things like that. Um, and for this foreseeable future, that looks like that's going to continue to be the focus of the team for now. Um, but then, once we get beta out, we can probably start taking a look at kind of what's going on in the world today. Because the last ideation process we did was about two years ago, and you know the web moves quickly, so we're really interested in that. Then we're going to try and pill, you know, pick out the build, biggest pain points, um, kind of build out prototypes, start solving these things in Drupal 8 contrib uh, first before we start solving them in core. Um, and then I, I just put a spoiler alert there that in like from talking to people, I have a feeling that media and layout are both going to rank on the subject of things that people have a hard time with in Drupal and could stand to be a lot better. Um, but I'm also interested in other ideas. And then finally, what we want to do is propose these improvements for, uh, you know, in, Dries spoke about semantic versioning. These kinds of things are stuff that could go in a Drupal 8.1.x release or an 8.2.x. It wouldn't have to wait all the way until Drupal 9 for most of this stuff. Um, so what we're going to try and do is build these out in contrib, get some people using it, feedbacking on it, and then when they look solid, then propose them for inclusion in core so that, again, the evaluators of Drupal get all of this stuff built out for them in the box. Um, and then it's ported between versions and stuff. So these are some trends that we're currently watching in terms of things outside of Drupal. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's been heading towards like really minimalist authoring. So like, you know, we're using pretty stock CK editor kind of stuff, which is still a huge improvement over Drupal 7. But a lot of, you know, things are going to even simpler interfaces and removing complexity and, and things like that. Um, I don't think Drupal can make enough assumptions to really get as minimal of a default authoring experience as something like Medium or, or, or something that's very focused around a specific use case. But I think what we could do better of is, is providing tools so that site, Drupal site builders could build interfaces like that just by clicking around in the interface, which would be really neat. Uh, personalization is a big area that we're watching. So uh, we build this product called Aquia Lift, but there's a tons of them that are trying to do this, you know, kind of getting to what Dries called the contextual web, which is, you know, knowing who you're talking to, knowing where they're coming from, trying to make the site built it with them in mind. So if I search, you know, flights from, you know, Vancouver to Austin and I click into Expedia.com, it's showing me results for that and not like, have you thought about renting a car in, you know, Bogota? It's like, no, I'm trying to get to Austin, you know, this kinds of thing. Um, and then this whole thing around contextual site building, which is sort of like a simple way to do is like in place everything. So it's not just in place editing of thing. It's like I want a block right here where I'm looking and the ability to actually like pull up a drawer, drag the thing into that region and then close it so you don't have to keep bouncing back and forth between this administration panel that's sort of abstract um, all the time. Exploring different ideas around that, seeing how much of that is actually feasible with Drupal and how much isn't, those are sort of the trends that we're watching. But what I actually wanted to do, since we're kind of a small group, is sort of get some ideas from the audience here because it's actually a really good time to get those ideas because we haven't started doing any of this yet. It's all kind of on the back burner while we're getting Drupal 8 out. So I'd like to spend, how much time do we have here? I have so skinny of a screen, I don't have a clock. 1.35. I think we have like... 30 minutes or so. So let's maybe spend like five minutes just people shouting out. This will be fun, right? Very participatory. What are the biggest points in, in Drupal for content authors that you've seen in what you've built out? Previews. Previews. I love it. Can I show, show hands for previews? Oh, man. I'm going to bold previews. That was a lot of people. OK. Uh, other things. Menu items, yeah. So specifically, uh, like the, nope. Um, specifically the ability to like build out a menu or do you mean like the ability to, once you've created a piece of content, get it into the menu where you want it? Uh, Both, everything about menu items. Yeah, I, I agree, it's really hard. All right, show of hands for menu items. Little less. All right, I'm, I'm keeping it on there, but I'm not going to bold it just yet. So, because I, I also run into that, but I wonder if like things like that we could actually squeeze in before Drupal 8 even releases. That would be pretty cool. All right, other ideas. Uh, editorial, yeah. workflow. editorial workflow. I heard a couple other ones. Revisions. Revisions. Links. File attachments. File attachments within the WYSIWYG. 
I should show you some cool thing. We actually uh, uh, have the ability to drag and drop files into the, the here, I'll show you. Um, I didn't get a chance to show that. Y'all are helping me refine my Drupal 8 demo. This is very helpful. But like, if I wanted to put like a PDF file or something in here, um, or this translation text, I can actually just drag and drop it right. Well, OK. If I had text enabled for that field, I could actually drag and drop it into there, which is actually pretty cool. But it's not very discoverable, so I think there is definitely more work we could do around that. Drag it from there into the, OK, got it. So. So desktop to uh, WYSIWYG. OK. What was it? Bulk uploads. Yeah, that's definitely a, a huge problem. Yes. How many times do I need to upload the Drupal icon to my blog? I've used it a few times, right? Um, other things? Okay. Yes, it does. For content authors? All right. I have another slide for site builders, so hold those things for, for you know, like that. But yeah, fair enough. They want control over the design of, of what they're. Okay, <laughs> got it. So the opposite of what he said, making it more, <laughs> so not a blue or blue. These are the blues you have, and you deal with it now. OK, yeah. OK. Can you explain easier to write a theme for an editor? So like easier to manage, uh, or like better selection of admin themes? Is that what you mean, or? Yeah, more, more, not more admin themes, but like more than admin themes. And that's probably a good Yep, I got it. OK. Applying two base styles to the Drupal that you need, or to the block, or to areas. So like that, what was JC's project? Styler, or? Skinner, yeah, like Skinner. Yeah. Might be helpful to know what they do think those are, so we could call them that. But yes, that's a good point. Yep. Sorry, I'm doing a really, sorry for the recording. I'm doing a really bad job of reading back what people said, but I'm typing them for everyone to see, so I'll upload my slides and you can see. All right. Sorry, I cut someone off. There's no hands, it's just shout it out. Oh, copy paste from Word and IE is done. CK Editor totally does that. So that's, yes, but I'll. <laughs> Have you tried it in Drupal 8, though? OK, it should be better. But yes, I'll write it down. Paste. Oh, I'm running out of things. That's so sad. Here, what can I do? Here we go. <laughs> what? Yeah, I could use Drupal 8. Yeah. I could make an, an, an entity for every single one of these entries. We could put a five star rating on each one of them, and you know, like. Uh, the ability to collaborate. Collaborative editing, yep. I don't know what Pate was, but that's now coming into this. So the ability to do like uh, Google Docs editing on in. Yeah, it, maybe it's better integration with Google Docs. So you could just, yeah, that's the other side of that, right? Yeah, we have links somewhere up here. 
So when you say links, what you're talking about is when I want to make a link to uh, another article or um, like something internal to my website, that's hard. Is that what I mean? Um, yep. Uh, that's not a sub bullet, that's a separate thing. Between uh, content, view, et cetera. Okay, this, this is all good. Okay, one more. I heard some groans in the room, so, yeah. All right, this is a good list. So here's how this works. Everyone in the room gets two votes, and I'm going to go through each one, and everyone's going to raise their hand for the, twice. Please, please yourselves. Two times you get to raise your hand for everything that's on this list, all right? Here we go. And I'm going to try and do some kind of horrible prioritization, and it's totally not going to work, but it's fine. We'll do this, like, in a better venue. But... It, you know, it's just, we're all here. Let's try it. All right, previews. I think previews is staying on the list. All right, menu items. Sorry, menu items. All right, editorial workflow stuff, which I, why I try to interpret it as things like draft. That was a reasonable amount of people. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to like, I'm going to put these in relative priority here. Okay, so editorial workflow is more painful than menu items, but menu items is still painful. Revisions. Nope. Links within a page to other pages, things like that. All right, it's a reasonable amount. I'm going to put that in the editorial workflow bucket. Um, a way to see relationships between contents and the views that they're in the blocks. Sorry, man, that one's getting iced. All right, file attachments, desktop to WYSIWYG, trying to make your files work nicely. All right, all right. Staying on there, but it's down with these things. Uh, bulk uploads. Decent amount, so I'm going to say that's a middle tier one. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Bold those, I'm going to italicize those, and I'm going to leave the other ones normal. We have such a great system here. This is going to work out great. All right. <laughs> um, hold on. Finding existing files, dealing with existing files, and linking to it. Did I already talk about that? I think it's redundant. I think that's very similar to links. Let's put links and files, file links together, and then we'll do that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's move paste from Word to its own thing, though, because that's a separate thing. Paste from Word. How important is that to people? Not nearly as important as the, like, you guys are very loud, but not very in number. It's just like the core developers. It's like, yeah, OK. Um, <laughs> the abstraction between editing and presentation layer being a huge problem. So I would raise my hand for that, but unfortunately, we don't rank. Editing CSS, the ability for content authors to uh, make a bluer blue on their site. Couple people, but nope. How about the ability to, for content authors to easily provide, apply pre-made styles to uh, the content that they're doing? Couple people, all right, it's staying on the list, but it's, all right, consistent content between pages, locking down fonts and headers and things like that, which is actually kind of the same thing. So I think I'm gonna put both of those together and make it, consistent styling, which includes colors and stuff, and I'm going to put it in the middle bucket. Don't you love my scientific approach here? Anyway. Um, different body layouts, three columns, two columns, stuff like that. <laughs> Did you vote any other time? All right, so you're using both of your votes. All right, that's cool. We can, we can do that. That's probably up here, closer to the top of here. Whoops. Um, okay. Uh, terminology, region, block, et cetera, node, things like that, exposing that to content authors. I think that's actually a huge problem, but apparently not big enough for us to work on, so no. I actually think we can fix that. Um, that's, let's talk about that more after this. And then, 
I think it's like there's a whole manner of things. Uh, what I found when I did usability testing, which I encourage everybody to try, because it's so enlightening when you sit in a room and watch someone use Drupal for the first time. And, and we did this actually, Google did a, did a hangout version of your usability testing on Drupal. And there was an IRC channel where we're all like, no, don't click that link, oh God, you know, like kind of thing. It's, like, it's totally like that, right? So what I find is like if you show someone a mock-up, it's like make this, and it's like a website mock-up in Drupal. They think, okay, so there's sidebar content, there's content in the header, and there's content in this. In Drupal, we're like, well, that's a view, and that's a block, and that's a menu, and that. And like, people don't think like that. Like, so there's too many words to learn, and then the words that we do have to learn are exposed to people who don't necessarily need to know them. So, all right. It's not just that. I want to be a little bit mindful of time. I don't want to start a huge debate because we have to finish in 13 minutes. So. But yes, that's, I think it's, it, but was that kind of what you were getting at there? Yes, fair enough, yeah. So it's that everything is all over the place. So, well, this wasn't a, there we go. let's do this, and it was this, and it was kind of a bunch of stuff around content model transparent, having to go everywhere to ever edit everything. Um, with it rephrased that way, does anyone else want to change their vote? Yay? Nope? Okay. Not really. So it's still kind of a low priority thing. How about collaborative editing? Trying to make it work like Google Docs? couple of people, but not really. All right, so what I'm getting from this conversation, and we'll have many other conversations, so it's fine. Previews are a huge problem. The ability to select between different layouts is a huge problem. Uh, and then a lot of things with getting files into your content and how hard that is. Bulk uploading, uh, things like when you replace a file, what does that do to other links? How do you select existing files you already have so you don't have to keep uploading things? How do you find stuff you've already uploaded and things like that? Okay, cool. That's great. Um, I might skip the site builder one because we talked a lot about content authors and I think a lot of that kind of overlaps unless do we want to spend, I really have to watch what time, I think we are actually literally done it too. So how about we do this? First, let's jump to the third slide which is what are other projects to watch out for? What are things that you've seen that you've used internally that people have really liked that we should watch that have really cool things that we should be evaluating Drupal against and when we're doing Spark 2.0 trying to pick the best ideas from? I think general, but focus mainly on like content authors and site builders. Ghost. Toast? Ghost. Ghost. Like that? Okay. Yeah. Like, yep, I hear that a lot too. Yeah, Squarespace has nice editing capabilities for sure. What is it? I'm sorry? Okay. Anybody in here ever have experience with like CQ5 or some of the huge ones? Doesn't sound like it. Sitecore. It's terrible. People use it. All right. What is it? Cool. Yeah, actually, that's a. Yeah. All right. What was it called, I'm sorry? Impress pages. Impress 
Cool. Craft. C R A F T. You never know, it's Web 2.0, so it could be like X, R, I don't know, Schwa. Anyway. <laughs> Live fire? Yeah, things like that, though. With a schwa, oh, I don't even think I know how to write a schwa anymore. I don't. Um, and then, uh, yeah, cool. All right, that's great. I knew about a couple of those, but a couple of those I really didn't, so thank you for that. All right, we have eight minutes. Let's start shouting out site builder stuff. Yep. <laughs> there was all these people like, I have the same problems as you. We should go drink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Others? Uh, Say that again. Sorry? Uh, Might have that now, actually. Um, in Drupal 8, a new capability of blocks is you can uh, create custom block types, like you can custom content types. So you can make an ad block, a uh, silly block, whatever you want, and then those blocks are actually managed in the configuration management system. So you can edit them, and because they're entities with fields on them, in theory, you should be able to in place edit them as well. Yeah, I yeah. So the ability to like kind of control and do synonym matching and things like that, so your your taxonomies stay nice. Workflow for taxonomy. What's that? Workflow for taxonomy. Workflow with taxonomy. Okay. I wonder how that looks in a cell phone. It's probably not good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, marquee, circle, click. I like this. You're designing like 2055 user interfaces for today. This is this is good. All right. Say it again. Yep. Hierarchical taxonomies. I have a question, it's none of my business, but are you a librarian? Yeah. Okay, I'm just wondering, because you're like, I'm taxonomy, man, that is my thing, so I'm just like, yeah, all right. With? Say that again? Context for blocks? Mm. So better visibility to what's showing up when. So like a UI for that. things you guys are throwing out here because like I didn't hear once like panels in core rules in core like <laughs> no what I'm sorry no but it's it's good I like hearing like the problems that people are actually having and maybe they're not that maybe it's just fine for stuff like this all right form okay and That'd be cool. Display <laughs> suite. So I'm sorry, you were trying to say? Content, yeah, content migration, right. Mm. 
migration. And then I'm sorry, there was one right before that, and I just place me. All right, we have four minutes, so I'm going to read these really fast. <clears throat> Reusable content that appears in different places, making that whole process easier to do. Really? Okay. Not very money. All right. Exportable blocks with editable content. Okay, these are really granular. I don't know that we're going to get much out of this exercise. We'll try it, though. All right. So no winners yet. Taxonomy term management sanity. So the ability to... All right. There we go. That's a few people. Okay. That goes to the top of the list. Uh, workflow for taxonomy. Is that part of the previous? Great. Then we don't need to ask about it. Um, I don't know what that was supposed to be, but uh, roles and permissions in min, making that better. And that was marquee and click. A marquee and click, yeah. All right. Fair number of people there. All right. These are tell says. Uh, better block visibilities, more powerful block visibilities to hide things on different pages. Nope. Sorry, block visibilities. Uh, hierarchical taxonomies with views, being, I'm assuming being able to create views of them kind of thing, yeah. Sorry. Um, extending context for blocks. Okay, extending context for blocks and better visibility into which blocks are sh All right, I'm going to take these one at a time. This one didn't make it, so let's combine it with your other one. Better visibility into what's showing up when. Really? That bites me all the time. But okay. Adding tokens in context UI. Path auto like. Sorry. Breadcrumbs. Oh, there we go. That lit up some, some folks. All right. Breadcrumbs. Um, block groups. Nope. Sorry. These are all good ideas, but we can only do like two of them, so I want to like become. Okay, point and click form design. Oh, wow. Dang, we found our new preview. That's cool. Kevin O'Leary would be so happy to hear that. He has wanted to redesign the field UI for I don't know how, how long he's wanted to do that, and that's exactly what you're saying. All right, uh, simple block migration, Excel style. Block bulk, I meant bulk migrate. So you can like upload a spreadsheet and it'll suck it in. Nope. All right, keeping it on the list, but it's not. I mean, an upgrade path. Uh, that was a funny joke. Okay. Yeah. Um, content migration as opposed to configuration migration. Really fascinating. All right, middle of the road, but it doesn't rank. All right, you all are very surprising to me. I really appreciate this. And display suite. Few people. All right, awesome. So what I've heard from this exercise is, <clears throat> if I can summarize, in one minute, um, in terms of content authors, the biggest things that people see happening all the time is previews are terrible, and it's really hard to tell what's going to show up when on your site and how it's going to look, especially in different browsers, especially in different things like that. So that's a good area for us to focus on. And also on the site builder side, making it easier to do what Drupal can do well, which is build this like structured content stuff. And so making it easier to design entities and fields and things like that um, to actually build out the forms that content authors use. And then in terms of things that we should watch out for in terms of new projects, um, there's a lot of cool stuff happening on the editing side. There's some cool stuff happening on the content staging side. We should take a look at these and other technologies to try and figure it out. Thank you very much, everyone. I really appreciate your participation. So what will happen from this, then, is sometime in a few months, we'll be putting out a general call that we're actually firing this up for real. But I really appreciate your input, because I'll go ahead and pass that off to our designers, and he can start marinating on that in the meantime. So thank you. Really appreciate it.